This week I want to try to talk about things that really matter. At this point, I think it's important to discuss history and to make sense of history. I think most of us in this community have a good grasp at this point. I enjoy sharing this subject and helping newcomers to see the things that we have discovered. But I also think it's important to discuss the present and the future. In this video, I'll touch on the future and, of course, the past. I want to be clear that ultimately you can have a good life no matter what. You have more control over your well-being than you think. One of the biggest illusions is that we must fix everything externally in order to live well and be content internally. But in my opinion, this is perfectly false. One of the greatest illusions we are faced with, we're encouraged to live externally. And there is much to be said for cultivating a peaceful and harmonious external world. But this is not always guaranteed. The only thing that's guaranteed is cultivating a solid internal foundation one that is free from the ups and downs of the external world. And this is not a video on that subject, but I thought it was important to put out there before we begin. I thank you for being here this week. I love you all, and welcome. I wasn't expecting where this research would lead. A lot of things led to the opening of my mind. One of the first things was the unintentional, ignorant abuse I succumbed to by the medical community. As a young child, I was given weekly doses of chemicals to treat something, but ultimately never to cure it. In their words, after 10 years of this, I quit seeking their treatment. I began researching and experimenting on the subject of healing. There's so much out there, and very little of it is shared with the professionals that are ultimately in it for the bottom line. Later in my youth, I read Behold a Pale Horse by William Cooper, and it really made me aware of things that most would never come into contact with, as far as information goes. I listened to The Art Bell Show since I was 18, in the 90s, and was introduced to many topics. Topics that were just dismissed as late-night conspiracy radio. Things that you would share with your friends and family in the morning and would be met with a blank stare. By the time I was 18, I was done with the conventional idea of how life should be. I lived in a van and eventually built a little cabin with a couple friends in Colorado. One of these friends introduced me to Taoism and off-grid living and all of the progress that had taken place, especially in the 60s and 70s, the passive solar home. These people would be the pioneers for modern off-grid living. And in my opinion, just living, living free and closer to nature. And by the time I had reached my adulthood, I was already disheartened with the system. I didn't feel like it was progressing. It was clear it was going backwards. At the time, I didn't need much more proof than something like the pyramids or many of the ruins we could see throughout this realm. It was clear that a greater people existed prior to our own. And it didn't seem like cost of living was an issue. And today I understand that this isn't just an accident. The mind is an interesting thing. It's very impressionable, and we're told a story, a history, and then we're ushered into the hustle and bustle of the modern world. Very little time to question and explore, and today most people have to work several jobs just to pay rent. Very little time for research or self-cultivation. Those that do research and share have always been silenced. 
going back to Plato's cave, going back to Jesus, always silencing the messenger. Very convenient. Really, history only matters in the present. I mean, it doesn't matter to these people. These people have all since passed. The energy that filled their bodies has now returned to the whole of existence, recycling everything physical and spiritual. Of course, we too will be recycled, and we hope that something would be left. Could we leave something for the future? Certainly, architecture. We could share our knowledge in books. And not only was the architecture splendid in the past, but so were the great thinkers. Today there's certainly a renaissance. People talking about forgotten great minds, old philosophers, inventors, engineers, all making a comeback as if we have been living through a mini dark age. It's hard to say how far back a dark age goes when you're living in it, but as of lately, in the last few weeks and going back to years, I've been trying to research the knowledge left by this man, Walter Russell. He was at his peak around the 1920s. It was said he was admired intellectually by Nikola Tesla, and I think if we understood what these two men understood and were able to freely implement implement their ideas, we would be living in a completely different world. So this man harks back to the 1920s, and often in my research, that seems to be in the thick of what I'm now calling this mini dark ages. And this great intellectual genius that seemed to exist becomes suppressed in this little dark age. We see the industrialization and modernization taking place. Ideas proposed by men like this, Walter Russell and Tesla, are put on the shelf, replaced by big oil. Now there's hundreds of men working on different, and women, working on different futuristic principles, ultimately based on the past. And suddenly the world is thrust into a new type of machine. Not a system of liberation, true knowledge and understanding, but one of hard work filled with distractions and a loss of understanding the self and ultimately the meaning of life, the understanding of everything. I've studied so many different people and in my opinion this man was really close to making sense of it all. I don't think anybody figures it all out, but here we seem to have a stopping point. And the Dark Ages would continue, I believe, until 2001, 2012, certainly by 2020. People are snapping out of it at an increasing pace. And still as I research this man, I have a difficult time fully grasping everything he was trying to share. Like many of the characters in the past, he seems almost too good to be true. Not only was he a inventor, but he was an artist, sculptor, and is even said to invent figure ice skating. I don't know. Maybe attempts were made to rewrite his history, to dismiss his great works. Someone tried to portray him, perhaps, as inventing figure skating. But maybe he did. Maybe he was using the principles of the wave, which he told us could explain everything. One of his books can be seen here, The Secret of Light. And here's an example of some of his diagrams. This would ultimately lead to him developing a motor. A motor based on the function of this realm. And everything in his research is completely opposite of the way we are doing things today. The way our motors run today, even the way we pump water through pipes or electricity, is done in straight lines and in an explosive fashion. Your car, even if it's electric, is based on an explosion, a burst of current. And his system, and what he proposes, the whole realm, is actually based on implosion. Spiraling waves. Now every wave, even wave pattern, is ultimately a spiral. We are just looking at the wave pattern up close, not seeing the bigger picture. 
he discusses how you could design a motor like a fish, trout in a stream. It opens its mouth and water flows in, being forced and compressed out the gills, creating a vortex. And this vortex emanates around the body of the fish, creating a field around it, allowing it to move upstream waterfalls without any drag or friction. And this is just an idea of what this technology is implying. There was also a great man before the Dark Ages, the recent Dark Ages, called Victor Gru Venaba or something. And he discovered that a beetle's wings could levitate. Just the design on the wing created lift. So say that if you have the right design, nature will flow through and around the design. And it's not actually the beetle's wing that is creating the lift. It's the energy flowing around it. Once the proper shape has been implemented, and nature is doing this constantly, harnessing the energies. In the old world, we can see the use of bells as a technology. And he shows that if you pour water over an egg, it creates this vortex pattern. All his technologies primarily dealt with water and air. Here we can see like a wasp type creature. And by beating its wings, it's creating essentially a small tornado on its back. And here's some of his diagrams showing levitation using his principles of the vortex. So how can we progress? How can we move forward if we don't understand the past? Here we have these great minds, great buildings, and a people who stumble upon them. We see that they enjoyed some of these technologies, even wireless trams, right alongside horse and wagon and early automobile. I mean, these people had the best of it all, but they were about to be thrust into this dark age. In fact, I would say they were in it because they didn't even know what they were seeing here. And this building, in fact, was demolished. And as far as my personal old world research goes, this picture of the Roosevelt Dam is pretty epic to me. It pretty much seals the deal. This being one of the earliest photos of the dam, a supposed construction photo, is pretty much exactly what we're seeing here at the top of the pyramids. I mean, exactly. And it's clear that this dam has been bombed, the first version of it. This is clearly destroyed and not construction. And I think it's the same here with the pyramids, of course. And this could have been some past technology, but it may have been something modern as well. Something we know nothing about, but it's pretty clear that this is not in its former glory the pyramid. Neither of these civilizations had cranes, and yet somehow they assembled all of these blocks. And these blocks are not too dissimilar from the blocks used to build many of these buildings that would be torn down, like this one. And in my opinion, this is all the same hand. Egypt, Arizona, and this place. This is Detroit's old federal building and post office. There you go. And this building is actually not that impressive. In the old world, this will have been standard. And today, a building like this will be a museum or a palace. And yet there was a transition. At one point, in the thick of the Dark Ages, this was torn down. This dam was covered with concrete so we could no longer see the blocks. And most people will be told that these pyramids are thousands of years old and that this dam is 120 years old. 120 years. Again, look at the man. Look at his outhouse hanging over. There we go. Dropping one over the edge. 120 years, 2,000 years. Identical blockage. And we hear talks of... Egypt in America. Egypt ruins found in the Grand Canyon. And today you're not allowed to explore this portion of the Grand Canyon. There's a no-fly zone. 
no hiking or access to these certain points in the Grand Canyon. And what are we talking about when we're talking about Egyptian ruins? In my opinion, this is it. And not actually Egyptian, but a unified people building here at the Roosevelt Dam in Arizona, in Egypt, and of course everywhere in the world. We can find these examples. Personally, I don't need anything as exotic as this, or this, or this. But I am interested in discovering what has been lost, what our true potential is. I'm not interested in blaming anyone or fighting with them, only to keep moving forward, to continue from where we left off. The Dark Ages have reached their peak, and we have the opportunity now to pick up the pieces and move forward, rejecting what doesn't work, or to repeat history and be forced out of our lands, wherever we should find ourselves today. No doubt, wherever you live, a wave of replacements have been brought in, and if they succeed, this history will be for them. Only a new people would accept the lies at this point. I thank you for being here this week. I love you all. God bless, and I'll see you soon.